Halo Infinite has been delayed, and I think we're all in shock. I think we all knew this needed to happen, but I don't think we thought it would actually come to be. And that's because these publishers, big companies, whether they're Sony or Microsoft, they're known for being greedy. So to see them sacrifice their bottom line come November 2020 when their new console launches, is something we just didn't expect. So it's really interesting, and I think the answers lie in Microsoft's new direction. Hi, Estelden here. So the announcement, it, it really shocked me. I did not expect this from Microsoft at all. I thought that Halo Infinite would release in probably an overall decent state. I think it wouldn't have been the absolute flagship game from a visual standpoint that Microsoft and the general public probably want it to be, but I think it would have been a pretty good game. To see Microsoft so confident with releasing the footage told me that this was definitely coming out, that they would have just hid this away if they were planning the delay already. So this is 100% a response to the feedback that's gone out. They've looked into the future and decided that the best thing for the Xbox brand is to make sure when Infinite comes out that it's going to be the absolute best it can possibly be. And the reason for that is because they want Halo and they want Master Chief, they want them to be the face of Xbox. They want you to look at Halo and see integrity, see the, the very best that Xbox has to offer. And then they release something middling, something that people look at and make memes about, like Craig, then that's when they're gonna turn around and say, right, is this what we really want? Just to make sure that the accounting department's happy in November? Because that's what would have happened if they released the game in the current state. And I'm sure Sony were having a good laugh and this would have shocked them too. This is gonna give Sony, I would say, an initial win. But in the future, I think the direction Microsoft are going in is very much going to help them. It's certainly going to help the consumer. I think it's going to lead to much better games down the line from Microsoft. And it's also going to put pressure under Sony and hopefully they get back to their very, very best. Like I think they were maybe late PS3 era, early PS4 era. So looking at why this is a good thing, well, I can tell you right now that 2013 Microsoft would not have done this. Even the Xbox 360 team would not have done this. And that's because they are all about the bottom line. What's going to happen in 2007, 2008? What's going to happen in 2013 and now again, 2020? That would have been the old Microsoft, just looking at the dollars and cents right now. But Phil Spencer and the Xbox team, they're obviously trying to build something that's going to carry them through this whole decade and into the next decade as well. That comes from all the studios they've purchased. It's come from what they've started doing with their games that are coming out. They're not just coming to Xbox anymore. They're coming to PC and not just the Microsoft shitty store that I try and avoid opening like the plague. They also release them on Steam and eventually, hopefully, other storefronts too. Let's just hope they stay clear of Epic because I don't want another Outer World situation. Even though that was Private Division, another publisher, but it's still fucking shitty. And Microsoft really should have put their foot down and done something about it. When Microsoft were releasing games like Gears of War 4 and even Halo 5, they were far more focused on what they were going to get out of these games in the short term. It was all about the microtransactions. It was about copying other games. If you think of Halo 5, I don't really think of Halo and classic Halo on the Xbox 360 or the original. I think of fucking Call of Duty. They were copying stuff from COD. They were putting it into Halo. They were turning it into something it wasn't, and all it meant is that Microsoft didn't really have like a unique property anymore. They were just using the Halo name to try and make some quick profits. That's all I see with Halo 5. They knew they couldn't do it again, and that's why they've been spending probably five now getting on six years since Halo 5 to create something that's far more phenomenal. It's going to be extremely unique, and it's going to be something we look at the same way that pl plenty of people look at Sony exclusives like Horizon or Bloodborne and games like that. And they're only going to do that if they release something that's very special. And I'm hopeful that Halo Infinite does have some special qualities, but the casual audience and the casual crowd, when they see Craig, when they see those muttered textures and average character models, they're going to lose their shit when it's not up to the same visual standard as a Ubisoft game or an EA game. And they're going to tune out. They're going to look at something else. I'll say personally, I couldn't give a fuck about the graphics. This game could look like a 1997 game. My favorite era of FPS, I'd probably say. I'd play it if the level design, the gun gunplay and everything that's going on is fantastic. I would absolutely check it out. But I know that that's not targeted to me. Like the average person who picks up a console... It's not myself, they're looking at other people there. So that's why they need to get this spot on. And now they're turning this all on its head because rather than do what Sony's doing now 
and buy up a bunch of exclusive content in third-party games. They, they're going fucking crazy with all that, Sony. I mean, it wasn't just Spider-Man that's exclusive to Avengers. That created enough rage, but now we find out that they've been doing the same thing with just about every third-party publisher. Anyone who's willing to, to take a bribe, essentially, Sony's coming after them and trying to get that content, trying to tie it just to the PlayStation. So PC gamers, Xbox gamers, Nintendo Switch gamers, they're going to miss out on something, and it's frankly quite pathetic. But coming back to Microsoft, they're focused instead on investing in studios and game companies that are then going to work for them for a long, long time. They might not release Game of the Year the first time around, but Microsoft are hopefully going to work with them and eventually create a whole family of really quality studios. I want to clarify right now that I'm not like some Microsoft fanboy who's all over them because I actually, overall, I probably don't like Microsoft. In the early 2000s, they pretty much ruined PC gaming. They took a large chunk of potential games away from the PC and focused on the Xbox console. There was a really bad era where there were almost no PC games really being released in the mainstream. It wasn't until Steam and Valve got in there that PC started to really come back to a lot of gamers once again. So Microsoft, they've got a lot of bad blood for me and even first person shooters. They took the keyboard and mouse away from first person shooters and now everything's designed for a controller, which to me is madness given how precise a keyboard and mouse is. So I felt like I had to squeeze that in there. That's like me talking as a PC gamer. So I wanted to clarify that because I see myself who's not totally into Microsoft but seeing what they're doing now compared to like 2013, 2014, it gives me so much confidence. And like I said, I did not think this would be delayed for a second. I thought there was not a chance it would happen. And now look where we are. This isn't coming out until next year. And it sounds like they're not just pushing it back a couple of months and saying, right, yeah, look, do what you can. We need to get this out in January, though. They haven't released some sort of date that we can go off. So this could release at the end of next year if it needs to from the sounds of it. If it means that they're going to get this right, Microsoft are going to give that time that is necessary to make this happen. And that is really, really a good thing. Because Microsoft, they just don't have that real anchor. They don't have that smash hit that they can really look to and fall back on. People have been sick of Halo. They've been sick of Gears of War since they're pretty much the end of the 360 days. They haven't really had anything on Xbox One or on PC that's truly been fantastic to that core audience. People have just moved on, I would say. They might pick up the games, but they're not going to stick with them. The multiplayer is never going to be a juggernaut like it was back in, I'll probably say, the Halo 3 days. That's when things really kicked off there. Meanwhile, Sony had The Last of Us. They recently released Ghost of Tsushima, which is a game that Microsoft would kill to have on their platform. And it's coming at the tail end of the PS4, so Sony don't even see it. It's like, like this is going to be our smash hit game. If they did, I think they would have delayed it until the PS5 came out, but they're confident enough when, with whatever they're doing that they could release Ghost of Tsushima in that fashion. So it shows you those opposite ends of the spectrum, and Microsoft want to get to that point and beyond, I would say, eventually. What Microsoft are doing that Sony most certainly aren't is they're trying to create value not just for the console, but for the service overall. And I think the delay with Halo Infinite really plays a big part in this and why they're confident enough now to delay a game like that and still launch their console in November when they realistically don't have any exclusive that's going to be like a must play and absolutely sell consoles. They're still confident with their service offerings. That very much comes from Game Pass. It very much comes from the fact that they're now engaging with the PC community. So they see them as a, a huge, huge user base of customers. I mean, Steam would have like hundreds of million of players on their launcher and Microsoft now see them as potential customers and Sony don't have them. No matter how many PS4s Sony might sell, the PC user base still overall is likely going to be bigger, even if a lot of those people aren't actively gaming. They might just be people who made accounts over time, but the average person having access to a PC is still much bigger than access to a PlayStation. The problem that Sony have is they don't have a real hook in, aside from the exclusives, and it's starting to really annoy PC gamers like myself. I know that with the Nintendo Switch, if I buy a game on it, I'm going to be getting the handheld experience from it too. So if I buy like Mario Odyssey, yeah, it'd be nice if it was on PC, but at least if I get it on the Switch, I'll, yeah, I can go and play it in bed. I can take it over to the couch or something and just sit there and play it. 
I'm still getting value that I wouldn't necessarily get on the PC, so it's at least giving me something a little bit different. A reason to buy the console outside just getting that exclusive. It's not simply an entry fee. And that's the problem with PlayStation at the moment, is it feels like buying their games and their exclusives, I have to pay an entry fee to get them. The PlayStation 5, it might be a decent piece of tech, but it's not going to compare to like a great PC, or I might be more of an Xbox person, and I still have to buy and, and pay that entry fee to play the Sony games. And I think people are starting to get a bit sick of it. And Sony know it. That's why they're absolutely doubling down on this practice. They've got no intention to do something like Game Pass. They've gotten very used to just sitting back and collecting their fees for the console and collecting their fees for the exclusives and all the DLC and things that come with it. They don't want to change that. They don't want to risk losing money in the short term to gain a lot more in the long term, which is what Microsoft are doing. I don't know if it's because they can't. I know with Sony that any of their other products are usually always in dire straits and they've always seemed to need to rely on the PlayStation to bring in all of that revenue. So it might be a matter that while the PS4 is really, really successful, certainly more successful than anything Microsoft's done, they still might need to keep that revenue going to really function and continue to put all of that time and money into the exclusives that are going out there. So it might be a case that that particular avenue just it can't be broken they can't risk really changing it so they're doing what they can with their short-term earnings they're going to those publishers they're trying to get exclusive content to make sure everyone buys a playstation very early on so they've got that big user base and those exclusives horizon zero dawn 2 is going out to absolutely everyone possible so that's where the difference is is microsoft's playing that long-term game and to give you an idea all of these different studios they've got now. So they've got now a number that's pretty comparable to Sony, but Microsoft now have that value proposition with Game Pass as well. So instead of spending potentially 500, 1,000 plus dollars to get all the exclusives, you're potentially paying a small monthly fee to get access to all of them through Game Pass. And I think it's a very different take on things. What it's gonna mean is I think more people who are using the Xbox are gonna play these games compared to users of the PlayStation who play the exclusives on there. So I might have just made that slightly confusing. So to make it really simple, if someone buys a PlayStation, plenty of those people will just buy FIFA and that's about it. But let's take that same person. Let's say they own an Xbox and they play FIFA on there. They play NFL or whatever those sports games are. But they've got Game Pass because it's pretty good value. They can tuck into like the odd game now and again, like a Far Cry or Assassin's Creed if they're on there. And that's maybe something they want to dabble in, but they don't want to spend 60 bucks on it. Now they've got access to all these games and those people might pick up something that they like and they realize, oh, it wasn't just about kicking the football. Now I, I, I can I play an RPG or I can do something a little bit different. So you're really creating customers in that aspect rather than relying on existing sort of core gamers which Sony might be doing for a lot of the time. And Microsoft might just see that as outdated. And they could be wrong. They could do all of this and it blows up in their face. And people are just too religious to Sony to really change what they're doing. Sony have done a really good job in building like an Apple-like loyalty with a lot of their customers who will just buy anything with the PlayStation logo. Anything that comes out. And they'll go, oh, there's, there's a game that's come out. It's, it's got the Sony name on it. And people are making fun of it online. They're assholes. That's the mentality I see from a lot of the Sony players. Whereas with Microsoft, I think a lot of Microsoft fans pretty much shit on everything that they're doing. Games like Halo 5 come out and people get frustrated. Same with Gears, and that's why they've had to change direction. They don't have that religious-like following. Sony released Last of Us 2, an absolute dog turd, and people didn't give a shit. They played it, and there's plenty of sites on the internet that are extremely, extremely serious, and they're very, very adamant that this is like a masterpiece, and they won't change their mind. There's always the coincidence that they've been playing and buying Sony games for like 20 years, and that can't possibly be affecting their judgment. So I think the best case scenario for gamers going forward is Microsoft getting their shit together. They start releasing games at least on par, maybe even better than the upcoming Sony lineup, and that's going to force Sony maybe to do a few more things. They're probably going to have to get a bit more pro-consumer, certainly with the PC market, because if they find out that the Xbox is still selling really, really well, but there's a whole bunch of sales going on PCs, so there's millions of people buying the exclusives on there too, they might come to realize, right, we're not really losing a whole bunch of money by releasing games on PC. We're actually only going to gain from that. So that'd be awesome from a PC standpoint. 
And then also from a game standpoint, I think Sony would then really need to really review what's going on. They might stop the hive mind at companies like Naughty Dog. I can tell you right now, if Sony were losing the console war, they wouldn't have allowed Neil to essentially ensure everyone was a yes man so he could develop his vision, so to speak. There's no way that would have happened because it damaged the Last of Us brand, damaged the Sony brand. That wouldn't have happened if Sony were in like a losing position, if we're looking at that whole console war stuff. So I think we're in a really good position. Microsoft, keep doing this. Ensure you release the very best, so people give you another chance. They come to you, Halo Infinite turns out to be absolutely fantastic, and so do your other games from your other studios. Don't rush them, don't rush them. Just keep playing this game, because I think it could pay off. Game Pass could pay off if they keep doing this and they keep doing the right thing within the gaming industry, which is something you don't hear very often from a big publisher. So they're paving the way and others might need to follow if they get this right and people know they can get their gaming fix with Microsoft, at least on console. And that might cause Activision and the like to change direction and do something that's a little bit more pro-consumer. I do want to clarify one thing and that's so I don't come across as a fucking hypocrite. And that is that I made a video yesterday about Vampire the Bloodlines 2 getting delayed and that being a bad thing. That game's going to be a mess because it's gotten delayed. I don't want it to seem like I'm just doing things because Microsoft are doing it and that's a great thing and not the same for Vampire. The reason is, in my opinion, is that Microsoft is so big, they've had this all planned for a long time, that they wouldn't have done this move unless they had something long-term planned and they really wanted Halo to not just be like a decent game, it needs to be like the best thing Microsoft's done in probably like 10 years. That's what's really going on here, I think. Whereas with Vampire, you've just got a studio that's never made an RPG before. They made a lot of promises. They've been taking pre-orders for 18 months. Ex expensive editions on games for with DLC components that aren't going to be seeing the light of day, I'd say, for probably two years from now, if we're lucky. So that's the difference here, is I think that studio's got no idea what they're doing, whereas Microsoft do have a bit of a plan. This is a spanner in the works for them but they don't want to muck up their long-term vision, and this is why they've delayed Halo Infinite. So hopefully it clarifies that, and I'd love to have that discussion if anyone disagrees. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.